Hey, Andy here from Andy's Golf Blog. Now in this video tutorial, I'm going to take you through the process from start to finish to edit your shot scope round from your shot scope V3 using your desktop computer or your laptop. Of course, you can edit your rounds using the mobile app that ShotScope have available on an Android or iOS device. And whilst we'll be using that to bring our round from the V3 onto our account, we won't actually be editing in the mobile app. If you want to know how to do that, please do check out my other video, either using the card above or using the link in the description. So in this tutorial, not only will I explain how to get the round off of your device and onto your account, but I'll explain how you can properly edit your round. I'll show you how to set up your own custom tees. I'll explain how you can add and remove shots, how you can change the location of the shots which have been collected. I'll explain how you can move the pin around if, for example, pin collect hasn't collected the pin in the exact location it was. We'll take a look at how to add penalty shots that weren't recorded during your round. As well as that, we'll take a look at how to mark a shot as a positional shot, which means it won't be included in your performance stats. We'll take a look at how we can save our finished round and how we can ensure that it either does or doesn't appear in our general performance stats. Hopefully that sounds useful. If it does, please keep watching. And if you find this video useful, feel free to give it a like and comment below. Let me know what you liked about the video or what your preference is when it comes to editing your shot scope round. As always, I would love it if you could subscribe, so feel free to do so and check out any of the other videos on my channel after you finish watching this one. So here is how to edit your shot scope round using the web dashboard on your desktop or on your laptop computer. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I have my ShotScope V3 watch and phone in close proximity. So I'm basically having them right next to each other. I'm going to make sure that my watch is sufficiently charged to allow me enough time to transfer the data from the watch across to my phone. So you don't need a full charge, but obviously enough to be able to transfer that data. So a couple of minutes worth of charge at least. Your mobile phone, you need to make sure obviously you've got sufficient battery life in your phone and that will depend on whether or not you're just going to use your phone to transfer the data across from the watch or if you're actually going to use the phone to edit your round. So in this video, I'm going to explain how to bring the data from the watch onto your account using your mobile and then I'm going to swap over to my laptop to actually edit the round. So I don't need a great deal of battery on my phone here. The third thing that you need to make sure you have is Bluetooth enabled and active on your mobile. So I'm using the um, Apple app here on my iPhone 12 mini, but I'm basically just going to launch the ShotScope app just now. And then you will see that we get taken to the rounds page of the ShotScope app, obviously after I've logged in. And we are going to use the orange connect band button at the very top. So this is showing me all of the different rounds that are on the system, but I'm going to click on connect band at the top. And then what it will do is it will transfer my round across from my watch onto my ShotScope account, again, using this app. What you will see on the watch is a little bar will appear and that will show you the progress. So basically, as the round has been brought off of the watch onto the phone, that bar will move along. So just now, the first thing I've got to do is I've got to click on the sync rounds button at the top. And now you'll see it's syncing the rounds. It tells me both on the mobile phone and on the watch that the round is being brought across. Once it gets to 100%, it will be completed and you should see your round displayed on screen there. Now you'll know the round has been brought across because it will be marked with a little orange pencil at the top there. So it tells you that that round still needs to be edited. Now at this point, what you can do is you can tap on the round and you'll be able to see a kind of rough overview of how you performed. You'll see there, I'm just dragging along the holes to check that it has actually recorded all of the holes. And unfortunately, it looks like it's recorded an awful lot of bogeys here for me. You can, at this point, you can see some information such as how many you went out in, how many strokes you came in in, your total strokes. But of course, you'll see under round statistics, we can't get those stats yet because we haven't yet edited and signed off on this particular round. You'll also see if you click on holes, you can see what data has been captured for the round when you click on each of the holes. 
So at a quick glance, you can see that it has actually captured quite a lot of shots here. But of course, I'm going to want, in and want to go in and do some more detailed editing to make sure that all of the data has been captured and that the statistics are accurate. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to overview. If I wanted to edit on my mobile, I could click on the pencil icon and you will see it now allows me to go in and start making changes such as choosing my handicap, selecting the T boxes and whether or not I want my round to be included in the course hub for other people to see, but also to include it in my performance statistics. Now, none of this is going to work yet until, of course, I go to edit, edit the round and then click on the sign off button. But at this moment in time, instead of editing on my mobile, I'm going to edit on my desktop. So let me just swap over to my desktop to show you how to make your edits on the desktop dashboard version of the shot scope. Okay, so here we are on the main shot scope website page. All you need to do is click on dashboard login at the top here. It will take you to your login page, which looks like this, and it'll ask you to put in your email address and your password. Once you've entered these, if you click sign in, you will then be taken into your dashboard where you'll be able to see all of your rounds, including the round we have recently uploaded and all of our performance statistics. So in this moment in time, we're going to take a look at that round up here, Dunfermline Golf Club. We're going to take a look at that one and we're going to edit it, then sign off and check that the statistics and all of the data is correct. So much like on the mobile app, you can go into overview and you can see basically all the different holes. You can click on these. So it will then take you to the hole to show you a bit more information. So you see here we can zoom in and out of the map. We can scroll down and we can see which clubs were used, how many yards, um, and that's for all of the holes. We can jump back to overview again if we want to, or we can go to holes and you can work through the holes if you like. So below overview, you will notice again, it doesn't include any statistics because we haven't yet signed off on our round. So what we need to do now is we need to do that. So to do that, we're going to click on the edit or sign off button here or one down here. So there's two buttons, both do exactly the same. So let's click on the black edit and sign off button. And then you will see you get this information here about your round. Now, when the sign off page like this arrives, you'll see or appears, you can see we've got lots of different information we can add about our round. So for example, it can ask you to confirm your handicap, which you'll see you can select from here. So you don't need to put the point in, it's just your, your standard um, handicap. So mine is indeed seven. That's actually di dictated by your profile. So if you've entered your handicap correctly in your profile and you keep up to date, it will um, display it correctly there, but you can change it if you need to. Now, you'll see here at this, it has said that I have played from the white tees. In fact, during that round, I actually played from the yellow tees. So I can click on the tee and I can change it to yellow, which of course alters the par for the course. Another thing to note that's actually useful at this moment in time is some people may play at a course where you have um, different pars depending on the tees. So for example, on my course, if I play off the yellows, then the third hole, for example, is a par four, but off of the white, it's a par five. Now, if I was playing a general play round on the white tees, so if I change that to white, then you'll see that it's changed the par to a five, but actually on a general play white, the third hole is in fact a par four for us on our course because we're not allowed to play off of the medal tee in the third hole unless it is a medal, but we can play on the medal tees on the rest of the course. So what you need to do in that instance is if you go into this plus button, then you can actually create your own T set and you can assign a par that's relevant for all of the holes on the course for that particular tee. So in this case, I would um, set the tee to be the whites. I would then create a tee set and I would alter the third to make it a par four. And you'll see I've actually done that because in these purple tees here, you'll see it's the same as the whites with the exception of the third hole. If you have any problems using that, then it is worth contacting Shot Scope support and they will help you out. But for now, I'm going to leave this as yellow because that's the tee that I played from. So all of these scores here, um, they're 
largely correct, but I'm going to go through each hole and just make sure. So what I want to do is I want to click on this edit button and we'll come back to four and five later on once we have edited the round. So I'm going to click on edit and it's now going to allow me to go through my round hole by hole to make sure that everything is as it should be. So here we have the first hole. Now just to start with the map, you can drag around to look at the map. So it's just using Google, Google Maps here. You can zoom in, so you can either scroll on your mouse or you can, if you're using a Mac like me or a tracker pad, you can zoom in with that. And this just allows you to move around just to be a little bit more detailed. So I'll zoom out for now. So there's my first shot. There's where the T was. Now you can see this is our normal T area here. But of course, during the winter time, we tee from a different box. So indeed, it has picked up the correct tee box, which was up here. And of course, we were actually teeing at the back. So it's fairly accurate there. If we move up, we can see where my next shot was. So up here, number two. Now, indeed, on this hole, this is the, the rough here. And I was just on the fairway. So a couple of things I want to check at this point. I want to check that the first club I used was in fact my six iron, which it was. And I want to check that my second shot was from the fairway, which in this case it was. And indeed it was with the sand wedge, so that's correct. You'll see it's marked it here as a tick for fairway, which it was, and it's also a tick for the green. So if I want to check the green, I'll just zoom up here and we'll just check what's happened here. So I can't zoom any further. Now this is one of the kind of drawbacks sometimes with editing is depending on the quality of the map. Sometimes you can't zoom in too far, but if it's a crystal clear image, then it, it doesn't really present any problems. But this is why I recommend editing on the browser version on your desktop computer rather than a mobile app, because this part here, editing your putts, is a lot easier. So you'll see here if I scroll down, I took three putts, which was correct. Um, my initial shot into the green did indeed just land right on the front so it was relatively poor and um, i left one quite short which it says here is um 21 foot short and that's probably not far off the only thing i've noticed here though is where i've done pin collect the pin was actually a little bit closer to the back of the green up here where i'm circling with the mouse so at this point what i'm going to do is i'm going to just grab the flag the pin and click and drag it up and then release where it should have been. Now, of course, what it's done here is it's now increased my fifth shot, my third putt, from around about six foot or so, um, or five foot to 12 foot. So what I can do here is I can take the um, fifth stroke and I can just move it a bit closer to roughly where it was, which in this case, it was around about a four foot putt. So in this case, it's difficult to be really, really precise Okay, so short scopes, the, the V3 is only doing what it can with the current technology with the satellites in terms of pinpoint positioning. Um, for me, the main benefit of the, the device is it allows me to know roughly how many putts. In this case, I know it's three putts. I know that I've left all three short because that is what I did. So I'm happy with that. And if that's the case, I'm now going to move on to the second hole. So I'll use the arrow there to move to the second hole. Now in this one, once again, I'm just going to zoom in and check that the T in area was correct for this one. So you'll see we teed off on the actual T there. Now I didn't really hit a very good shot here and to be honest, it actually landed in the bunker, but then bounced out and landed just after. So accuracy wise, that is bang on there. I then played a relatively poor chip, still short of the green and that's correct. And then in this one here, the pin was right at the front and I did indeed leave my chip short, um, although it wasn't miles away, it was round about within two foot. So this hole here is, um, is spot on. I really, really hope that you're finding this video useful and informative so far. If so, please do give it a like and remember to subscribe. Now, back to the tutorial. I'm going to jump to the next hole just now and check this one. So the T up here looks to be correct. That's where it is. It's not actually in this teeing area here. We're in this position. I hit a fairly good drive there and um, you'll see it tells me it's in the rough. Now that is correct. Although it looks like the fairway, the rough actually starts where I'm highlighting with the cursor here. So the positioning of that one is correct. I then hit one into the bushes. Now, interestingly here, let me just zoom out. 
I hit one into the bushes and then I had to chip out from the bush to the rough. Now it's only registered that as one stroke. And the reason for that is I was basically in close proximity where I took both shots because I only nudged it forward probably about a couple of foot. So what I need to do here is I need to add a shot in between the third stroke here and the fourth because I didn't hit my wedge out onto the green, I chipped out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the third shot and then I'm going to click on this button that says add. So you'll see you can add a new shot, you can add a penalty or you can add the pin. I am going to add a new shot and it will automatically set it as the sand wedge. You'll see it picks randomly where, if I just move up here, it chooses randomly where to position your fourth shot. Uh, I, as I said, only just chipped it just out. So I'm going to pop that in there. And then I played my chip shot from there to the back of the green. And then once again, I did manage to putt quite close to the pin and that looks pretty good. So here, as you can see, I have now added in another stroke by simply adding using the add button. So just to remind you of how I did that, simply clicked on the stroke, which was this one here, and then clicked add, which added this one in. Now, if the four shot wasn't a sand wedge, then what I can do is I can choose my club. So you'll see here, you can then select from here which club you used. Now, this is something to be mindful here is that I've got two four irons, two five irons, two sixes, two sevens. The six irons and seven irons that are in black, so the irons in black, those are my old clubs, okay? They're still in the system, but that's my old set of clubs. The yellow ones are my new set of irons, okay? With the exception of the six iron, which is actually green, but I know that's from my new set. Okay, so if you have added tags to a new set of irons, it will still have the data for your old irons unless you've deleted those rounds. So what I tend to do is I tend to just confirm that it is the right color by looking here so I can see the five irons yellow. Therefore, if this shot was a five iron, I would want to choose a yellow five iron and not the black one because then the statistics are going to be skewed slightly because it would include for my old five iron, not my new one. So in this case, I would choose five iron and then you can see that I would have played my five iron from there to there. In this case though, it was indeed my sand wedge, so I'm just gonna change that one back. And the reason they're in black and the other ones aren't in yellow is because those are my original sand wedges which haven't been changed. Okay, let me just jump to the fourth hole now. And I'm not gonna go through every single hole, as you can imagine, because we'd be here all day, um, but I'm just showing you roughly the process to make sure that uh, we use some of the other options. So let's have a look at this one here. So I hit a three wood down to there. Let's imagine for um, the sake of this that I actually hit my three wood out of bounds, okay? So the tee shot here, I'm going to pretend that it went um, onto this, this field, okay? It went way right. So right now it's recording this hole as a par and actually everything there is pretty much bang on even down to the pin, which was actually just tucked in at the front of the green there. And indeed I came up short and chipped on and putted. So let's, um, let's include a penalty stroke here. Now you can actually use the penalty stroke option on the golf course if you need to um, on the watch, but I tend to do it after my round. So I find it a bit easier adding a penalty stroke in on the dashboard rather than trying to do it on my watch because there's quite a few different options for different penalties. So I'm gonna click on the three wood here and you'll see that I have options to drop the ball. So for example, if you'd hit it into a hazard, you could take a drop from there. I'm gonna click on lost though and you'll see it will mark it as an X. So it has now included the penalty. What I will do is I will zoom in a little bit and I'll move that marker. So um, you don't need to go as drastic as put it in the field, but let's, let's drop it in there, okay? So you can see that that's where my tee shot went. So then I hit my third from the teeing box to this position. Now, if I was to say change my club, so instead of hitting a three wood again, I maybe change to something else, then I can come in here and I can make that change in there. So I could say it was a four iron, for example. So as you see, you can add in penalty drops um, and penalty shots using the options that when you click on a shot, you are presented with. So there's the penalty there. Now, if I added that by mistake, what I can do is I can go to the cross and take that out. So yes, delete that. And of course I didn't actually lose the first tee shot. So I'm going to remove that by clicking on the cross 
and then delete that one and we're back to having played the whole the correct way. So I'm going to continue editing this and I'll come back in two seconds and show you another useful feature within the shot scope dashboard. Okay, so I want to highlight an option called the positional option, which is really useful. So what happens with shot scope is when you look at your statistics for your performance average, it takes out any of the shots which have gone drastically short or drastically long, so compared to your kind of average. And that's what helps to build up a good overview of how far you hit each club. On the golf course though, there are some times where you maybe take a certain club off of the tee, which you've only just gently swung, or for example, you have landed in the trees and you just want to pitch out with a club, which is going to go considerably less than it would normally go. To make sure that it doesn't get included into the stats and skews them, you can mark it as a positional shot. So you'll see here, I have this hole here, this is a 15th. So I had a drive here of 200 yards. Now, I know for a fact that there was not a great drive. Um, I barely even managed to catch the ball. It came off so high on the face. So I'm going to leave that one as 200 because that was the drive. And the chances are, stat-wise, it will likely be omitted. Now, my second shot here, I hit a three wood and unfortunately managed to basically um, totally hook it into the trees. Okay, so 116 yards. Now again, that one will be omitted because it's considerably less than the usual, around about 220 for a three wood. But it's the next shot I want to focus on. So I'm going to zoom in here and you'll see I was quite deep within the trees. I didn't have a chance to get my ball up the fairway. I had to punch it out sideways, but I had to get underneath the branches. So for this one, I took my five iron. So I'm going to select the five iron. You'll see here it is marked as being 30 yards because I just punched it out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mark it as positional. So I've selected the par five, um, sorry, the, the five iron on the third shot. And I'm going to then click on the positional button, which will turn it green. And that one will now be marked as a positional shot. And it won't, as I said, have any impact on the stats. So all I've done is marked it as positional. And then, of course, I'm going to continue just going up to make sure that all of the information here is correct. So I'll check the last couple just now. This is another quite a good example here. Um, it was majorly windy. I hit my hybrid because it was probably going to be too long for that hole. I took quite a lot off of that one. So I'm going to mark that one as positional because it was a positional play. And then we have a couple of further options here. So putts look okay. Um, I'll leave them as that. I'll jump on to 17, just double check those onto 18 and this was the final hole so again this iron here this nine iron um this could have been a positional shot in fact it was um the seven iron there we go so seven iron 96 yards that was the market's positional and onto the green pin was indeed at the front and yep i had a shortish birdie opportunity missed that as per the the way the round was i left it slightly short and had about two foot to tap in now, if I've gone through it all and I'm happy, at this point what I want to do is I want to scroll down and you'll see there is a save and exit button. Now, what I tend to do is when I'm editing, I actually, more often than not, certainly on the mobile app, I will save as I go. So I'll save each hole. I'll still edit, but I'll use the save option. So you see here, we've got all the information in. Um, I'm going to go to save and exit. And then it does give you the option here, you can save and exit, you can exit without saving, or you can continue editing if you want to maybe go back and make some changes. But for now, I'll go to save and exit. And then what it's going to do is it's going to take me back to the page that we saw before, which was this one here. So you can have one final check. You can decide if you want it to appear in your statistics. So if you maybe played around here on like the winter greens and winter tees, and you were playing off of a mat, in fact, that's what was happening with me, you maybe don't want to include those in your general stats because you weren't hitting off the ground, you weren't playing the whole course. So what you can do is you can click on this checkbox and uncheck it, and that means it won't go into your performance statistics. And then you've got the share on the course hub, so you've got the option at this point to share for other people to be able to see you around on the course hub area. So I'm going to take that one off as well because I don't want anyone to see this um, atrocious round. And I've made some changes for the purpose of this video, which aren't um, exactly the same as how I've played the course. 
So what I'm going to do now is you've got this bit that says sign off. I'm going to click on the blue sign off button and it will now save my round. And what you'll see is it has completed the round. Now you'll see you don't have the statistics displayed here, but what you will see is there's a little symbol up the top left with almost like a no entry sign, which basically tells you that this is inclu not included in your stats. If we decided we wanted this to appear in our stats, what we could do is go to edit sign off. I could then go here where it says include this round in the performance stats and then go to sign off and you'll see what will happen. We will then get stats, okay? So we can then compare this round. So compared to my 47% average, 33 for greens and regulations, pretty poor. Um, I scrambled worse. But the only thing that was actually better was my, my fairways in regulation. So as I said, I don't want these stats to be included in my performance. So I'm going to go back to edit and sign off. I'm going to go back in here where it says to include. I'm going to uncheck it. I'm going to sign off and it will now remove those stats from that area. So depending on what I'm doing, if for example here I've just played on the little nine hole course at lunchtime, I don't want those stats to go into my main bank. So rounds like that, it's nice to be able to go back and look at how I played. So I can see in this one here, I was um, just one over par, which is not bad, but I don't want that to actually skew any of my main performance stats. So there you have it. The process of editing your round using the web dashboard on a desktop computer can be, in my opinion, a lot easier than trying to edit using the mobile app. Of course, it comes down to personal preference and I would love it if you guys could tell me below in the comments what your preference is. Of course, if you enjoyed the video, please do give it a like and you can also let me know in the comments if you have any questions about editing or about the ShotScope V3 in general. Thanks again for watching and remember if you enjoyed this video please do give it a like and feel free to subscribe to my channel where you'll find loads more other videos to do with ShotScope products and golf related content. But thanks again for watching.